Good morning. Um, so this is uh, William from Counterpoint Research, and uh, we're it's our honor to have uh, Chris Patrick from um, Qualcomm uh, Mobile Division. Good and we, today we'll talk more about uh, smartphone and Snapdragon 8 Elite. So, well, um, I guess this product launch this time in Hawaii is also a phenomenal one. And um, well, I guess people are not quite familiar with your new uh, chips. So could you maybe share with us in the, in the first on the uh, key upgrades um, based on your second generation or RAM core and uh, maybe share with us on something on compute part. Okay, happy to, happy to. Yeah, so this uh, chip, you know, every year we have, uh, around this time, we announce a new Snapdragon 8 uh, processor. Uh, but this year, really, it's an intersection of uh, many different um, incredible kind of technology vectors. Uh, the first one and the kind of most important one uh, in many ways is uh, our new Orion, second generation Orion core, as you described. This is really taking the, a, a similar core architecture that we did for compute. We have the X Elite, which is our compute part yeah. uh, that we launched uh, last year. Um, and we've taken that core and then optimized it, improved the power, and really made it ready for mobile. So what we've uh, created, as I describe it, is really a desktop class a CPU with uh, the power efficiency of mobile. Um, so really, we think it's going to be transformative uh, in the mobile space. So that's the first big upgrade. Uh, then beyond that, we have a brand new GPU architecture. Uh, that uh, that really moves things forward in terms of uh, efficiency, uh, power efficiency, as well as uh, performance. Uh, brand new ISP, we're mm. calling the AI ISP, yeah. uh, that allows a lot of new flexibility for um, how we manage images, how we add AI processing to the, the processing of, of images. Uh, so that's going to be exciting. You know, and many more upgrades across the entire uh, device. Yeah. So talking about ISP, uh, you're talking about uh, your hexagon MPU, right? Actually, we're talking about the combination. combination. Um, so yeah, the, the ISP is the you know, image uh, signal yeah. processor. Um, so that's part of how we, we go from the sensor uh, all the way to the final image um, in, in our imaging pipeline. But yeah, what's interesting this time is, is the combination of this and our NPU. Uh, so we've added connections to very efficiently move data between that uh, image signal processor and our NPU, which is our AI accelerator, essentially. Yeah. So the two can work together. Sounds great. So, well, um, people nowadays are talking about AI, and I believe um, the, the overall MPU is very crucial to the AI performance. Absolutely. So um, could you share with us more color on the um, what's the upgrade uh, this time on your MPU, and how could you uh, leverage this to improve your um, AI performance, and um, how could it help uh, smartphone users on the, in terms of user experience? Sure, sure. Yeah, in this case, the NPU is 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 expanded and accelerated, um, moved to sort of incremental upgrades to the architecture, the micro architecture. Um, so it's a new acceleration that ultimately ends up with um, better power um, and as well as uh, as better peak throughput. But what's exciting really about the uh, about the NPU and the whole AI space is how quickly the software is evolving. Yeah, the hardware is evolving, but the software is evolving uh, yeah. very quickly. Uh, one of the things really we're focused on this year is multimodal AI. Okay, so the ability in generative AI, you know, we can we can process a certain kind of, of input um, or produce a certain kind of output, like say text. So text to text. Uh, what's very interesting this time is the ability to handle multiple modalities. We call it multiple types of, of input. Uh, so for example, you know, if I described outside, there's a beautiful flower here yeah. in Hawaii, and I showed a picture of it with my phone, right? Yeah, based on the context, both the image as well as the sound I'm making, it can understand I mean a flower like a beautiful flower petals, yeah. as opposed to flower like a dust of a flower or something. But it's a combination of those two different kinds of input, yeah. both a visual input and an audio input, that would allow that AI to be more capable, more responsive, uh, more intuitive. Yeah, well, sounds great. Yeah. Wow. So um, I guess in addition to the um, MPU and AI performance, I guess um, you also uh, have some upgrades on your Adreno GPUs, yes. which is very important to gaming experience and gamers. So you know nowadays, um, I guess gamers spend more time on smartphones over PCs or gaming consoles. That's right. That's right. And so I, I believe this is a very important part. So could you also share with us some upgrades on the GPU? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, this is for us as well. It's a new GPU uh, yeah. architecture. That's what I'm saying. This is really a, it's an intersection of many different technology vectors all in one device. So so pretty exciting for us. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the GPU we call we call our sliced GPU. 
So it's a change in the kind of the physical design, um, the architecture of the GPU, which traditionally we've had sort of in a sense one big GPU that's very interconnected. Uh, now we have in, in kind of the modern, as we look at how to do a, the physical design of a modern GPU, we've changed the way we implement uh, the GPU. So it's really, it's more modular, it's sort of slices is the, yeah. is the concept. Anyway. Um, but the net result of that, I think the end user doesn't care how we uh, do the architecture, but they care what they get. Yes. And what they get is uh, incredible improvements in performance with incredible reduction in power. And actually that combined with the CPU, the new CPU, the combination of the two uh, is showing some incredible results when it comes to gaming. Just in incredible. Um, because yeah, some games are very heavy on the GPU, uh, some are very heavy on the combination of the CPU and the GPU. So the improvements are made on both processors. Uh, is is shaping up to be pretty incredible for a uh, high performance game. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. So, well, um, in addition to the performance side, I guess connectivity is also very crucial to smartphone chip. That's right. So, well, I guess um, Qualcomm is always known for your um, connectivity, especially something from 5G modem. Yes. Um, so this time, do you have any upgrades on the 5G modem bar, which could um, better uh, accelerate the, the performance? Yeah, of course. It has to, if it's Qualcomm, it's going to be an incredible uh, new modem uh, system, yeah. as well as incredible um, Wi-Fi connectivity system. Uh, so this year, again, we have both. So we have the X80 uh, modem RF system, yeah. um, which, uh, yeah, which brings incredible performance. Actually, here's a place where AI is featured as well. Yes. Um, so we have AI in many different aspects of that uh, modem capability, um, including kind of antenna management systems and other aspects of, of the processing. Uh, so yeah, so you're going to see incredible um, Motor performance, robustness um, in challenging environments, really some, some pretty cool things. Uh, on the Wi Fi side, uh, we have a brand new Wi Fi solution called the Fast Connect 7900. Yeah. Okay, and so that, uh, that provides industry leading uh, kind of Wi Fi throughput. It integrates actually Bluetooth and Wi Fi, traditionally we've had uh, together, but actually adds ultra wideband. Okay, so the combination of the three, you know, very exciting. Uh, all this moves to six nanometer for the first time for us, which means lower power, even though we're keeping that very high mm -hmm. uh, throughput. So pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah, it's interesting. Yesterday at the keynote, I saw that the first and uh, number one that's right. when you're presenting your that's right. that's uh, right. Snapdragon Connect. That's so, right. Yeah, that's why I have this kind of impression. That's right. That's right. I think we're, we're very proud. Obviously, uh, this is a place where we've been leading, you know, for four decades yeah. uh, on the modem uh, side of things. And then again, on the Wi-Fi for a couple of decades. Uh, so yeah, so we're very proud, obviously, of what yeah. we achieved there. And, and everyone knows this is where you go for the leading solution of the edition. And um, this time in Snapdragon 8 Elite, mm -hmm. um, when talking about performance, people always talk about the power efficiency. So um, in the long history, Qualcomm has perfectly balanced the power, uh, performance and power efficiency. And um, I guess this time, um, can you elaborate how you prioritize the performance and the power efficiency? and how you see it evolving into the AI generation since we got, uh, we probably need a lot of um, capacity and uh, to, to deal with the AI. Sure, sure. Yeah, right. power efficiency is in a way what we do uh, at Qualcomm. You know, we do, we're very proud of obviously the peak performance we can generate, but fundamentally what we do uh, mm -hmm. first and foremost is produce that power efficiency, produce that, that performance at incredible power yeah. efficiency. This is really the focus uh, for Qualcomm. Um, so, yeah. So in this case, I think that was the that was the engineering challenge, right? It's how to produce these incredible record-breaking uh, performance levels while still maintaining uh, and, in fact, improving greatly improving battery life. Yeah. And yeah, we're very proud. We feel like we've achieved um, both of those things. Um, partly, we picked the right transistor, um, but more than that, really, we have the right architecture of the SOC. We have the right architecture of each of these technology blocks. And as you said, for AI. Yeah, AI actually makes things even more challenging in this aspect for uh, the engineers as they mm -hmm. look at, for example, yeah. um, now we're not just doing camera processing, but we're doing camera processing at the same time as, as kind of AI augmenting that camera processing. So the challenge for the engineers is how to get all of that within uh, a pretty small power envelope. But again, this chip we feel like is, a, is an amazing combination of all those things. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, maybe I got the last part of the uh, question, which is on AI as well. Sure. So, well, you know, uh, these days, the major technology players are trying to build up their uh, maybe AI platform and together build up the AI ecosystem. But um, I guess we still need time and uh, we still need efforts to see, before we see the, uh, the killer apps coming into the world, which could accelerate the AI deployment. So um, in this train, 
um, how do you see Qualcomm uh, play play your role, and um, how do you see you your work to um, help to accelerate the overall AI development? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, again AI. In a way, we're still at the beginning. You know, this is something yeah. where uh, every year AI is evolving so quickly. AI on device, AI at the edge is evolving uh, yeah. so quickly. Uh, so again, we're still still early. I think we all want to see it come together right away, but it's, it's going to take us uh, a little time. Um, but yeah, what we want to really want to do is, is spur on that innovation, spur on uh, the development. Uh, so yeah, so we're committed here to both kind of building the right hardware platform, the right low-level driver platform, and then um, the right flexibility mm -hmm. in our platform. And then we're trying to enable the innovation, the creativity of these developers. Uh, one thing we have as a as an initiative there is something called the AI Hub, yeah. which we feel is going to be a pretty is already uh, very important uh, here, and it's going to continue to be more important. Uh, so this is this provides sort of the the connection uh, between a developer who has an incredible idea, yeah. uh, but doesn't yet know how to get access to the model, or maybe doesn't know how to get access to the model. Certainly doesn't know how to get access to our incredible MPU on the hardware, or maybe doesn't have hardware uh, to mm -hmm. run it on. Uh, so the AI Hub solves all of those problems. Yes. Uh, you can just go on to the this this website essentially, um, get access to model, and actually on the on the site you can actually run that model in your app on final Qualcomm hardware. So anyway, pretty pretty um, we think impactful um, as it kind of just reduces the barrier to entry mm -hmm. uh, for new and innovative apps. Sounds great. This AI Hub. Yeah, probably be your most important platform in the future. That's exactly right. And exactly I, right. I guess you, you talk about the partners um, who you work with on the AI, and um, could you share with us some cooperation with the maybe industry friends and uh, your, your your strategy and your plan on the AI development? Sure. Yeah, we have partnerships really with just about everybody yeah. um, on, on AI. So it's been been pretty exciting. It was a big players like uh, Meta uh, with Llama. You know, they spoke at our event, and uh, obviously Microsoft um, and other so big industry players um, to much smaller players looking at uh, at select image signal processing enhancements and things like that. Where we have uh, again great connections. Obviously, every OEM we have is uh, passionate yeah. um, about AI and is involved and we're working Absolutely. closely with them to, to enhance things. So again, we're proud. I think it's uh, it's gone. It's gone incredibly well. Okay, thank you, Chris. All right. Well, looking forward to the smartphones equipped with your Snapdragon 8 at least. Me too. Well, Me come, too. I, I guess coming um, maybe before the end of this month. Yeah, I think you'll see the first devices uh, before the end of this month. Cool. cool. That's right. Definitely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you All for right. your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.